We're now joined on tonight's broadcast by Porsche factory driver and defending GTLM champion of the WeatherTech Sports Car Championship, uh, Lawrence Van Thor. Lawrence, welcome to the broadcast, and uh, hope you're doing well this evening. Thank you very much for having me. <laughs> now, uh, we had a lot of fun with Earl a few weeks ago. He, he was on and, and talked a little bit about how sim racing had affected his career, supplements his career as a Leo real life driver. And as I think back on what he told us, the biggest thing that he emphasized was how much training you all did, especially in Vysok, getting time in the sim and training more of the computer programs than the technology behind your factory 911s. Uh, what sort of work do you do with the factory team? And is it more focused on the car, like Earl said, as opposed to maybe learning some of the circuits? Well, there's yeah, two, two ways of, of, of looking at it. One is the, the work we do with Porsche uh, and Weissach. Um It's getting uh, actually more and more. Now, pretty much before every, every event, or especially the big events, um, we have uh, a simulator session, so we call it, in Weissach, um, where we have this huge simulator, uh, complete room, uh, three, four people working full time on it, I think, uh, and, and prepare the race uh, as far and as good as we can. Obviously, there is still limitations to what you can do uh, and what doesn't yet make sense with the technology what exists today uh, it's important for everybody to to understand that because sometimes you know people working on it get carried away but there it's a bit from our job to say from look this this is too early this is not reality uh, this makes no sense yet uh, but other things do a lot like systems uh and fuel fuel saving uh, aerodynamic configurations uh, all those kind of things uh are small details which we can prepare in the simulator together with porsche and then there's the other aspect which is i think a bit more privately uh like you could see in the corner <laughs> my sim here in my office is to to learn the tracks and to um to to keep busy and, and, and train, especially in the winter or in this period, you know, you can train your concentration and your focus and, uh, and stay in that rhythm. Um, it's obviously still not real life that I think everybody knows, but, uh, it's the closest to what we can do. And then there's another thing, which is sim racing, but, uh, that's a whole other story. <laughs> you bring up a very interesting point that I think when you reflect on it, it does carry a lot of weight and truth to it, that, there's a separation now, especially as the technology is developed, between what you find with the work and what you do in Vysok and then what you do at home. So it sort of sounds like, just based off what you said, that there are almost two mindsets that you carry, depending on whether or not you're working with the factory simulator or whether or not you're just running at home. Is that true? And can you explain the differences between the two? Yeah, actually, it's... Um... It's pretty much actually because especially in, in now this last couple of weeks where Porsche wants us to do more esport racing like IMSA, uh, the IMSA series or Super Cup series, I'm getting more into depth with online racing, let's say here at home. But it's very different to what we do in in, in Weissach with Porsche because what we do there is we tr we try to drive how we drive in real life, how we drive the car. Uh, when we would be really in it and really driving and working on setup in, in that way and developing in that way. Whereas now, and that's what I'm learning now the hard way by do, starting with it late, the sim racing thing, you're, you're learning how to race on the simulator. You're doing things which often in, or sometimes some things in real life you would never get away with. It wouldn't work, uh, but it's tricks um, like there's tricks in every car to go quick, there's tricks on a simulator to go quick, which don't necessarily line up in that case because you're looking at the the gray zones of 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 the game and 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 what the simulator is doing, what the car model is doing, how close it is in in, in real life. You're doing the same thing. You're trying to get the maximum out of it to go quick as possible, but if, if you go that deep, it goes a bit of a different route uh, and. Um, yeah, that's 
that's why if like for me now to start esports i'm learning those things and uh, it's not always very easy but uh, it's definitely a challenge you touch on another very good point i remember in, in one of the broadcasts here in america the nascar champion joey logano talked about the difficulties of getting used to the sim especially with the lack of feel as he described you don't necessarily have the motions and the forces that normally would indicate to you that the rear end is stepping out from underneath you or you're struggling with understeer or oversteer that all those cues in a simulation are visual so how has the learning curve been just getting used to those cues in particular and to the differences and the little tweaks in sim racing that make you quick as opposed to little bits and pieces that you use to make yourself faster in real life um it's not very easy i must admit it's actually difficult <laughs> because uh there is there is that factor where you know real life like call it, you have the butt feeling <laughs> what your car is is doing uh below you and that's probably the biggest indication i'd say in my case which you can feel the car and react to what's doing now obviously that's not there um so you need to rely on other input on on your eyes visually uh seeing what's doing uh on on your ears on the simulator the the, the tire sound uh often says a lot to listen what's if that's indicating something and 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 your steering feeling um you know you have to try and get that same senses out of uh different areas uh which you know you're basically kind of learning how to do it all over again it's not very uh, it's not very easy and um that makes it makes it a bit uh tough to learn uh for 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 real real drivers who are stepping in and not have been doing this for years and the other thing is you know in real life often you get normally go what one two three hours of practice and then you go in and you start driving where here practice is basically unlimited uh and i know the the real hardcore sim race just they start at seven in the morning and they stop at 10 in the evening <laughs> and uh that's a lot of practice and um uh, that's yeah, not easy to spend that many time uh i'm trying to catch up to be to be good but you know if you if you do that three days you're like okay now i don't want to <laughs> i don't want to step in, my, in that room anymore for the next two days so um it's definitely definitely different and uh you know we're we're used of driving and, and driving to be most of the time quick and competitive and then you have to get your basically your ass kicked by <laughs> by other sim races or other drivers uh sometimes frustrating but it's part of the learning process i think I think it it goes back to the principle that you see most often, I think, with blind people or deaf people, where obviously you lose one of your five senses, but at the same time, uh, most of those people find ways to develop the other four that they have so that they all end up being stronger. Given that when you race in a shim and that sense of feel is taken away from you, it, in theory, should heighten your ability to lean on both you, your ears and what you hear and then what you see to make your skills and your senses as a driver better. Do you feel like you know, there's something in the idea of sim racing, maybe training your eyes and your ears better so that when you get back to real life racing that you end up with a more complete skill set on that front and you aren't necessarily just completely relying on that butt feel, as you said, to figure out what the car is doing? It's actually a point which I've asked myself as well um which to be honest i could see as a potential benefit it's difficult to judge right now we'll know that in x amount of time when i'm back in the car but that definitely could be you know you're developing and, and, and trying to work on other things and other experiences so you're learning new things and there are probably a couple of things which you can carry over but uh, you need to be smart as well you can't carry everything over from sim racing because like i said we're learning things now which are specific to the sim, and then you need to be smart and know what you can take over and what not. Uh, I think it's more of the the senses uh, which you can take over, but pure driving style uh, that's that's too specific to real life. Uh, that would be not a good idea, I think, to 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 keep that in, in the brain. Uh, but there's definitely definitely plus points. I think I hope 
I hope there's some positive as well to do on real life, to spend all these hours in the sim. So, uh, but I'll be able to tell you oh, in a couple of uh, weeks. Off, off <laughs> with my uh, airplug. <laughs> Fair enough. Now, uh, obviously, there's the feel aspect of sim racing that we've talked a little bit about. There's also the circuit learning that I think is a very big piece of it as well. And uh, now that you've had some experience as a Porsche factory driver for a few years, I suppose it, it might not be as big, but when you think back to 2017 in particular, first year as a factory driver, and all the exposure to the new circuits that you had in that season, how much was sim racing useful and helpful, and, and did you lean on it to learn some of the new circuits that you got the chance to race in that year and in that point in your career? Yeah, I definitely did. I think uh, that's... I'd say back then that for me was the most important uh, aspect of, of having a simulator here at home to learn learn those tracks because uh, 2017 I didn't know any of them I was completely new as well to to IMSA um, so that that helped me a lot um, and you know now I'm learning further prospects about about sim racing but yeah, definitely that's that's for us one of the key preparations which we which we do uh you know it's even if you it's not gonna change your weekend but it's gonna help you uh if you if i do the sim and i prepare a bit and get my my brain going in that circle and getting those reference points and those feelings left right it saves you 10 20 minutes of first free practice to get into a rhythm maybe uh depends on how how good you know that track but uh, you know if that if that's something which you can achieve by doing that, well, there that's a no-brainer. You, you do it. You get ahead of the curve and save yourself a little bit more time at the circuit. Yeah. Uh, of course, there's there's circuit learning. There's also car learning as well. And uh, for everyone in the PCA, they compete with uh, all kinds of Porsches in I racing. They've competed with the GTLM 911. They've competed with the GT3 Cup car, uh, and in the fall they'll compete with the Cayman GT4. So uh, can you speak to your experiences in whatever way, shape or form on how those cars behave in the sim and, and how they compare it to the way those cars drive in real life? Uh, a bit difficult to, to say for uh, two of them, but the RSR obviously I know really well and I'm using it on, on the simulator and it's, it's very close to be honest. Obviously there's still minor details to real life, which are hard to get away but uh it's it's very close and i feel definitely i feel familiar when i very familiar when i drive with an eye racing um so it's it's a feeling which which i know and feels familiar so i think that's a very positive sign uh in terms of saying that it's realistic the problem with the cup car and gt4 car i've actually never driven them in real life <laughs> so uh as i'm I was not one of the typical Porsche juniors who came up the ranks. I came from from another brand. Uh, I've never raced in the in the Cup car, and I've actually been wanting to to try it, but it, it simply there wasn't any time up to now and any chance. Uh, nor for the GT4 car. So uh, I've got that experience first in I racing. Uh, maybe I should give our a boss another call to <laughs> to let me give a try to at least be able to <laughs> to speak about that. But uh, from what I hear from from Nick Tandy, uh, who's, who's driving it a lot and knows the cup car very well, he says it's uh, it's as hard to drive as it's in real life. So uh, <laughs> that's a positive sign. No, I, I think that lines up with what a lot of people have said that uh, the GT3 Cup car in particular is one where it isn't the easiest to learn, and it definitely takes a bit to get used to it, but. A few cars in iRacing are more rewarding to get right once you really know how to get the speed out of it. And then the GT4, you figure it's just you, you throw it around all over the place because there's absolutely no downforce and, and not mm -hmm. much grip. But you've got a durable chassis that can be sort of willed in those ways, shapes, or forms. So I guess that as you have a little bit more time here in the sim, do you have any sort of goals that you want to accomplish before we get back to real life racing and and things that you want to try, you want to learn while we're all here at home? Um, it's it's been a give and take. I would, you know, this IMSA series and the Super Cup series, especially IMSA, uh, is taken very seriously by by Porsche and by the esports division. 
we've actually the races on Thursday and we've been practicing since last week Monday. Uh, Nick, uh, Tandy and, and Guven, myself. Um, so pretty much all our focus is going towards that uh, because uh, the eSport division, they, they badly want to beat the, the BMWs who's been successful and they don't like to see that. So uh, we're training a lot and working a lot on setups and, and strategy and, and details, like almost like in real life pretty much. Uh, so it's sometimes more of a job than 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 a real just so we can for fun. Um, my goal, I think, for for when it's over, is to get better at it, to get quicker. I'm I am progressing, but obviously, I'm you know it's not something which happens overnight, especially when everybody's unlimited time in practice. Um, and I would I was thinking about it before. I would love to do some some fun series as well. You know, it's just. Uh, I don't know an all-star series with uh, NASCAR stars, IndyCar stars, IMSA stars, and um, I don't know five, six races, uh, a NASCAR race, an IndyCar race, a GT, uh, an IMSA race, a dirt race, uh, whatever. And every time, just half an hour before the race, announce which track and which car it will be. So nobody has time to practice and to do setup and you have an hour of practice and you go and then no, then it's just really fun and it's drivers competing against each other and, and going for it without spending hours and hours of, of, of preparation and it would be a heck of a show I think um, who knows maybe somebody comes up with that idea that would be I think a really a really fun show uh, aspect of it. The Lawrence Renthor Invitational I think yeah I, I know of a few drivers who have come up with ideas like that. I know uh, American Landon Castle of races in NASCAR took those cup cars to the Oval at Monza and turned damage off entirely <laughs> on Easter Sunday. And uh, you can imagine what kind of madhouse that was. But uh, there is something, I think, to be said about how, you know, drivers, and I think what you just said is a perfect example of it, that, you know, yes, obviously, there are the bits and pieces that you have to tackle as part of your job with whoever your employer is. But at the end of the day, there's still the love of racing there that we're all drawn to. And ultimately, I think that's what we come back to in some racing. And I think it sounds like what you come back to as well, that, you know, at the end of the day, it's it's about having fun and enjoying it, right? Yeah, I know, and that's, you know, that's my personal opinion. And uh, I think, obviously, obviously, and that's what, what always happens, you know, IMSA series, there's brands now competing in it, like real life, because everybody's sitting at home, basically. So and that's what happens in real life. BMW is winning. So obviously Porsche wants to do better. So they're going to put more effort in it, more training, more uh, resource. And then tomorrow, maybe Corvette wants to join in there. Oh, then we want to beat Porsche and BMW. So they're going to do more. And then, then it's starting to become a serious business again. Uh, whereas... And that's my very personal opinion without having to represent a brand or win is I think my opinion we're doing this most of the time, mostly as well as, as as a show for the fans to watch us on, on TV and, and and or live streams and so ever. That's the main thing. Uh, I don't think it I, I don't know. It's uh it's not it's very close, but it's not a real life IMSA series. Um, so I, I would like to do some 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 more fun, uh, pure fun races from from time to time to to put on a, a great show like that, that like that NASCAR thing. Uh, but I get that we also need to to take it seriously and 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 represent Porsche and, and beat all the others. Um, so I think it's good to try and have a good mix mix of both. Um, but yeah, like you say, there is a part which is a job which we have to do and and basically listen. To what 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 we what they want us to do, and uh, there's a part where we can uh, have fun, and ultimately about finding the balance between the two, which I feel like is a general life principle that we come back to a lot as Probably. well. Yeah, Lawrence, thank you so so much for your time, and uh, hope that you get the chance to have a little bit more fun. And best of luck, of course, when we get back to real life racing. Thank you very much. <laughs>